and welcome to Behind the Mic Radio. Gosh, it is Monday. Is it Monday all over again? I mean, really, we just had the weekend, and are you kidding me? But I'm glad it's Monday. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I hope that you had a great weekend, and I I hope that uh, if you know who our guest is tonight, that you are excited that it's Monday. I know that I am. For once, Mondays are not bad. (laughs) And uh, we are just tickled to death to have her with us tonight. Um, In case you don't know who we have with us, let me give you a little background on her. Um, She is known from a lot of popular TV shows, um, shows like Nickelodeon, Speed Time Rush, Disney Shake It Up, and Pair Kings, and ABC Families, and Nine Live the Chloe King. And she's been working on Big Time Rush, uh, the latest season, and a new show to Disney called Dog with a Blog. But if you are a soap opera fan and you're a huge fan of All My Children and you know um, in late April, Prospect Park, God love them, brought All My Children and One Life to Live back and it is now currently airing on Hulu. Well, she plays the role of Miranda Montgomery on All My Children. Oh, my gosh. I am hooked. I love the show. I am pleased to introduce you tonight, Denise Khan. Hello, Denise. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm great. I said thanks for having me. Oh, you are so, so welcome. Thank you for being here. I uh, am very, very excited to talk with you tonight. I I just want to go ahead and tell you right out of the gate that prior to the relaunch of AMC and One Life to Live, I was always kind of a CBS soap fan. But I am so hooked on all my children. I can I can't break away. I have to watch it. I mean, and I've gone back and rewatched certain episodes. You know, I'm like, yeah, I missed something. You know, or, or wait a minute, let me back up oh, and, gosh, and see this. No. I mean, it is awesome, and I love oh. your character on the show. Um, you're, <laughs> Thanks. You're, I'm so I mean, glad. with a lot of with so many of the veteran actors on the show that are back for the relaunch, which is just phenomenal. It is so nice to see you in play and some of the newer actors. I mean, I'm already such a big fan, and uh, so we're so, so glad to have you with us tonight. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm glad you like the show as well. It was a a crazy experience already, and I can't wait to get back on set and continue and finish off the season and everything. Exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess, you know, before we kind of get into AMC talk, because I know there are a lot of fans tuning in tonight (laughs) that are just ecstatic, you know, that are so, so glad that AMC is back. And I'm happy, being a longtime soap fan myself, I'm so happy that those soaps came back. I mean, that is just awesome. And um, But I want to kind of back up, because as I was learning about you and your background, I was just impressed. I mean, you've already done so much, (laughs) you know, in – you know, you're you're not old. Thank I mean, you. you're not my age, for goodness sake. So you've already <laughs> got so much on your resume. You know, it's quite oh, impressive. So, and and I I failed to mention uh, in the intro that you're also a musician. So you know, we've got so much to talk yeah. about tonight. <laughs> I do. I guess, I guess we do. Well, I look forward to it. <laughs> Well, I guess the best place to get started is um, which came first, the music or the acting? Um, oh, that's a really good question, actually. A lot of people think that it was acting because that was um, the thing that I did with the most visibility first. But uh, truthfully, I've been writing music since I was um, maybe 10 years old. So it's been, a, it's been a long time. And it's, I mean, that's always been one of my huge passions. And um, acting was kind of a happy accident a little bit. Um, I never really knew in my heart that I wanted to do acting until I actually did it. And I was like, wow, this is really great. This is a lot of fun. And being on set is such an amazing feeling. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I have come to really love both of them. And if I'm lucky, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, keep pursuing both of them. Well, I think that's awesome. I mean, first of all, I just want to say that when I found out that you were into music, um, indie artists, and, and new artists that are trying to break out into the music scene are just near and dear to my heart because um, oh, I run a, I run a separate radio show that is no it tailors solely to indie artists and their music and, and featuring it and and so I was just um, I was so impressed by that and um, so here you, you know you've got this huge resume of things you've done already on the on the acting side and to boot you know you've got a great musical sound that I absolutely love. I've had the privilege of, of listening to your music and um I'm like, <laughs> wow, she could she could what maybe the better question is what don't you do? Because 
that's a great <laughs> choice to have, you know? <laughs> well, I can't cook, so there's one thing. Uh, <laughs> Well, so you know, that, that's okay. Those, I mean, mm-hmm. we've all got to have our, our strengths and weaknesses, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, well, let's talk about the musical side for a moment because I know that, you know, that being the, your first love in terms of, you know, the first thing you really got involved in, um, what was it that kind of inspired you at such a young age to, to get into music to start with? Um. I, you know, I don't know. It, it's really, it kind of just happened randomly because um, neither of my parents were really into music before. I mean, they have a, a good ear for that, but it was never something that they pursued. Um, I think it was actually, you know, they put me in piano classes when I was like five, and it was always something that I, I didn't want to do. I was like, Mom, Dad, get me out of this class, you know. But, um, of course, now I, I thank them for it because I love piano and I don't know what I would do without it. And then I um, I ended up developing a love for other instruments. Like, I, I learned guitar and self-taught at that. And then with that kind of came songwriting. It was all very spontaneous. I think my family wasn't expecting it either. So, um, But, you know, it's nice. It's, it's kind of like um, it's a little bit therapeutic. It's almost like a diary, and it prevents you from, like, you know, you put everything in one place, and it prevents you from saying or doing anything that you might regret in, in the future. <laughs> you just write it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, but it's, um, I love it. I've always loved it, and I, and I continue to write for probably as long as I live. Well, and I think that's awesome because, you know, in your case, you're one of the lucky few that has two things that you both – you know, you're both very passionate about and, you know, you. either or, I mean, that you can pursue. And that's, that's the beauty. I mean, because a lot of actors can't say they're into music. I mean, there's a lot there are, but but it, it's a rarity, you know, that you can find someone that's Aww. got a multi-talented thing going on. And so, <laughs> you know, as you, as you started to pursue music, who would you consider to be some of your musical influences? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um Let's see. I've always loved Alanis Morissette. People say she's kind of angry, but I just think she was so clever with her, the way she worded things. That's probably the one mm-hmm. thing that I really take pride in is, like, um, I, I'm more of a lyricist than anything else. Hello? Before. Uh-huh. I like that. So any kind of comical artist. I also like Katy Perry, mostly for her writing style. I think um, she tends to put things in a really funny way, and she walks the line very well between, you know, being almost controversial but not, but you still love her. Um, you know, there's, there's, I have a lot of musical influences. I listen to basically everything. But um, those are two artists that I really I, – um, I look up to them a lot. Oh, uh, well, you know, the thing that I, I kind of picked out of your music right away was that it's just fun. I mean, it is the kind of music that <laughs> you throw on after a long day at work or you're kind of in a really crappy mood and you just put your music on and all of a sudden your mood just changes. I mean, it's just fun. <laughs> and, oh, and, um, and, and, so, and I guess the reason why it comes across that way is because it sounds like when you're performing it, it you're having the time of your life. Oh, I mean, my producer is so great, too. He makes it such a fun environment. We're such a good team together, so it's it's exciting. I'm glad he thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, most definitely. I do like it. And and just so the listeners know, um, we're going to be playing a, a sneak peek of one of your songs um, that's going to be on the, the new album. Now, talk a little bit about this album that's going to be out soon. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> Do you have a do you have like a, a potential release date for the album? Oh, good question. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, I do. I I was like, uh, hmm. anyway, yeah, I we don't have a set date for it yet, but um, it's all I can. I mean, I really can't say much. And <laughs> same with the soap, right? But I can. Oh say, yeah. Um, I mean, better than nothing has been released for a while. And um, it kind of gives a sneak peek into what, um, I guess, what the rest of the album is. But we do have other songs that are a little bit different, some that are more, you know, um, 
not so quirky and, and more that are um, more pop oriented. And then we have others that are a little bit more edgy. So um, I think in total we have about maybe 11 or 12 songs done. It's still a matter of um, figuring out when we're going to release it, and we're still making tweaks and everything. But I figured it'd be nice to show a little sneak peek of, of what we've been working on because I've been anticipating it for so long. So I, I really hope you guys like it. Uh, well, I like it, and, and that's why I'm so excited tonight for us to be able to play this to the listeners because – just to give them an idea of, of your musical side, because those who are watching you currently on AMC and have watched you in, in some of the other places that, you know, the shows that you've been on, um, this is a whole different side of you that, you know, honestly, I didn't realize, I mean, being brand new to AMC, I'm learning all the characters as it is, but and all the uh, the actors and actresses and the roles they're playing, but this was a side of you that I was just so pleasantly surprised to find out, you know, <laughs> that you have. <laughs> just because, like yeah, I said I earlier, I... I Indie artists are near and dear to my heart, so I love, you know, I love indie Aww. music and I love new music that's coming out because honestly, it's to me, it's it's a lot better than most of the mainstream stuff you can ha- you Thank can you. hear because that is so kind of um, rote and it's just so packaged and you know and and there's no you can tell that the creativity is somewhat right. Stifled, but and it's, you know, it's funny that you said that. Um, no, it's oh, funny it's that you said very that because true, most people you know? tend to be surprised by by my music as opposed to the character that I'm playing too. It's it's very different but, you know, in a way it's I think it's a little bit similar. Miranda's pretty uh she's got a little spunk to her, so I'm hoping I can incorporate more of that um in the episodes to come. Well and you know, I the thing that I, I think that kind of surprised me the most about your music the first time I heard it was because after seeing you play the role of Miranda and, and seeing her, you know, the character of Miranda I don't know. I was kind of expecting out of the gate to be the music to be kind of, you know, maybe like a ballad, you know, a little more. Yeah, calm. mellow. It was, just, yeah. it was just mellow, and it was just poppy, and it was fun, and it was upbeat. I mean, it was like, wow. I mean, it's not like I couldn't see Miranda doing that, but it was just interesting, yeah. you know, how I had that preconceived notion, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly. Great stuff. <laughs> so so let's talk about the acting side of your world because, you know, prior to AMC, I mean, gosh, you did quite a few great shows. I mean, uh, oh, okay. there were no small feats. I mean, you know, when you're talking about being affiliated with, with networks like Disney and ABC Family and Nickelodeon, I mean, the three out there that are probably the biggest, you know, on cable television, I mean, my gosh. Um, talk about how that kind of evolved for you, because I know you said that was unhappy, uh, getting into acting was a happy accident, per se. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of started, uh, oh, gosh, it started when I was maybe eight. My mom decided to get me into modeling, and, um, you know, I, I had no idea. Like, I, um, I had just come out of recess, and my hair was ugly, and my face was ugly, and I was like, where are we going? <laughs> and we went to this um, audition. <laughs> And uh, and I I guess ironically I, I got picked up by an agent and I modeled for a long time and I did some campaigns um, you know that kept me in work for quite a long time actually for uh, like Barbie and Target mostly and then um, one day out of the blue my my agent was just like hey you know you should audition for this movie and I was like ah I don't know. Um, I remember actually my first music, my first sorry, my first movie audition was a total train wreck. I forgot my name when they asked me. <laughs> they were oh. like, oh, you know, slate your name, and I was like, uh, oh my gosh, what's my name? It was the craziest <laughs> thing. <laughs> but after several, um, you know, several auditions, I kind of got the hang of it, and I ended up booking this movie called The Last Day of Summer on Nickelodeon. Um, and that was, I mean, I was 11 at the time, and it was such a blast to shoot. It was actually with um, Hayden Panettiere's little brother, Jansen, and he was a sweetheart. We're still friends, and um, yeah, and then that kind of happened, and other things started happening, and uh, I think the next really big thing, I did a couple films, and then I um, I got into Big Time Rush when I was, I think, 15, and that, I mean, like I'm 18 now, turning 19 in September, and it's just finally ending now. But it's, I mean, it's been such a whirlwind, and it's so cool to be, you know, such a part of a, a part of a, you know, a big show like that. 
and then from there, um, you know, Disney came into the mix a little bit, and that was fun, and I'm still doing a dog with a blog on there, which is fun because I get to have this crazy Hispanic accent, and so um, that's a new one for me, actually. And then, of course, all my children, and I think, truthfully, all my children's probably been my favorite so far just because, um, you know, I'm on set all the time, 24-7, and we've all become such a family and so close to each other, so... It's it's been a lot of fun so far. Well, I mean, you've had quite the acting journey to be so young. I mean, you are my son's age. I mean, if that tells you anything, and, wow. and it's just it's amazing <laughs> to me. And he's about to graduate from high school this week, so we're having a really good week. Oh, but congratulations! It's, it's, <laughs> thank you. He, but I, I'm just so amazed and and so impressed by you know, all the things that you've done and, and it's brought you to this point of, of all my children. And, and, you know, I can just tell, you know, as I said, I I never watched the show before when it was on network television, but Mm. I can just tell from the camaraderie and the way the storylines are playing out that all of you have just behind the scenes really formed this great family atmosphere. You can see it in how you interact with each other as you're delivering your lines and, and the stories are playing out. It's just, it's really neat to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 been, I don't think I've ever been as close to everybody on a set as I have this one. And maybe it's because we also spend so much time with each other. I mean, within the first, I think, couple of days, we were forced to have this kind of, um, you know, this chemistry on, on camera, and that doesn't always just happen. And it was really lucky that everybody on set just happened to be so nice and so welcoming and all the veterans really took us under their wing and you know gave us some pointers every now and then and um yeah I mean I really couldn't have asked for a better experience so far can't wait to get back there <laughs> <laughs> well now you know although you have been incredibly busy you know in your young life you know modeling and, and acting and other shows did you ever watch all my children um before I mean was it kind of one of those things your mom let you watch, or, or have you never seen it? It was, until um, you act- <laughs> no, I, I actually have family members who watched uh, all my children. They um, they were really, you know, they watched a lot of soaps, and that was one of them. So um, I remember when I booked the role, I, you know, I was familiar with the soap. I had seen a couple episodes, but I wasn't so much a soap fan. Um, mm-hmm. So when I booked it, I was like, oh, hey, you know, I booked this role on all my children, I, you know, her name is Miranda, and they were like, oh, Miranda, what, oh, my gosh, you know, and uh, <laughs> they kind of filled me in, and um, I I don't think I, any of us expected it to be as big as it is and how, as, how crazy, and I mean, it's really an honor to fill such big shoes and to have to, you know, continue the Kane legacy, which is um, it's a big torch to take, <laughs> but um, I think so far it's going really well, and uh yeah, I, I like it. Well, mad, mad props to Prospect Park because so many, you know, I I just know that there's so many fans out there who, who really rooted and full for, you know, those two soaps to be back. And, and when it happened, I mean, the fans have just, I, I've never seen a more dedicated legion of fans than soap fans ever. And so, obviously... So. They they have a lot of pull and a lot of say in in what they truly want and what they stand for. It it is it's been amazing and it's made people like me who never watched the shows because I grew up in the era of you know my grandparent and my mom my grandma they all watched CBS so it was like you know that was the network and, and it was like taboo yeah. almost in my generation growing up to venture off you know or so to speak but yeah. it made me want to tune in because I was so much hype about the two shows coming back. It was like, I, you know, and then the other yeah. thing of it was that <laughs> there were other actors that had been on some of the CBS soaps in the, you know, in the interim while the soaps were off the air. So it gave me an opportunity to see some of these actors. And then I got excited. I was like, well, I want to go see them in their original role in, in All My Children, you know, yeah. and that sort of thing. And it, it really has been amazing what Prospect Park has done oh, and no. the way they brought the shows back and so many of the original characters and, and have just kind of moved the storylines five years into the future, but yet, you know, it, it's really neat how it's been all tied together and, and just yeah. it's been magic for the fans, no doubt. Exactly. And, I, I mean, it's, we really owe it all to the fans 
um, we have some awesome fans. It's, it's really crazy. Right now we're on, uh, I think we're number one on Hulu and iTunes for TV episodes, or sorry, for TV seasons, um, which is so cool. I mean, we're all still kind of just basking in all the, you know, amazingness of all of it. And, um, yeah, I mean, the fans tweet me every day. They're on top of the storylines. You know, they're telling me, you know, do this, do that. And I'm like, oh, just wait and see the next couple episodes. You'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Um, no, but they're amazing. <laughs> I'm so grateful for them. Well, and, and you know, how has it been for you? Because, you know, unlike being on, you know, one of the, the cable network series where you, you know, I mean, you've got such a presence now because you're one of the main characters on the show. I mean, you've got a storyline. Oh, okay. I mean, from the word go, just front and center, you, there's Miranda. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. And so it's been, um, it's been really interesting. I mean, I'm sure that your fan base has just ramped up. And um, how yeah. have you handled all of the attention all of a sudden? Um, It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I don't think, you know, like I said, I don't think any of us really expected it to be as crazy as it is. I mean, it, it's been a whirlwind, but I love it. And, you know, like you said, my fan base is increasing, and it's um, it's diff- it's a much different from the previous fan base I had. You know, I'm so used to having, you know, kids and, and you know, people from the ages of, like, 9 to 12 probably. So to have mm-hmm. a soap fan base, which is a complete different demographic, I mean, all kinds of demographics, to be honest, it's really, it's kind of a breath of fresh air, you know? Like, it's nice to hear their opinions and to, you know, have conversations with them and see what they think. And, you know, they're just so educated and um, and just very sweet, much sweeter than I would have expected. And that's such a pleasant surprise for me. I mean, I, I love them. I think they've been great so far. Oh, yeah. Well, I have to tell you that from the moment I started watching All My Children, immediately I just fell in love with your character and also um, Eric oh, Nelson, who plays you. A.J. Chandler. I mean, the two of you do <laughs> such a phenomenal job on the show, and your interaction is mm-hmm. it's, it's like this brother-sister pairing with yet this underlying residual chemistry, you know, and angst. And right. it's just amazing to watch how you two play off each other and, and how well, <laughs> you know, your characters get along. And and it's just, it's a classic, you know, love story that's kind of trying to unfold. And I'm so rooting for your two characters. I'm like, please, let's just come into something. I love it. Um, you know, and so it's just been, it's been really neat. I mean, I, I tell you what, he won me over. AJ won me oh, over. Oh gosh, when he won us he, all over. <laughs> <laughs> when he, well, when he did the, you know, when AJ did the whole setup uh, for Miranda, uh, you know, because she didn't want to go to her school prom because of her school yeah. dance because of what had happened to her, and he just pulled out all the stops. And I thought, what girl is not sitting here watching AMC, going, "Oh my gosh, I wish my boyfriend would right? do this." Right, Miranda. Wish, out of her why aren't guys like this in real life? I mean. You know, every girl, even even me, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, you know, this is crazy. So he, you know, he's really set the bar very high, very high. So um, I know it's you know. funny because it's during that whole time, Eric and I on set were just like, what is Miranda thinking? Mm-hmm. It's just funny. Yeah, and Hot Shell Ray actually was really cool too. They showed up for that um, for that scene, and they performed live, and it was cool to meet them all and everything. And, that was a really mm-hmm. that was one of my favorite scenes to shoot. It was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Well, I think we all wanted time. I mean, we wanted to be right there with you watching it, you know, and we were, but in the on the set watching it live. I mean, that yeah, was just right. was great. And I was like, wow, you know, and that's what I think in my opinion being a new new fan of AMC, that's what's drawn me in. I I remember telling a, a friend of mine not long after it began who has been a diehard AMC fan for a long time, and she was trying to fret me before the show aired, you know, on all the backstories. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, I said, I'm hooked. I cannot break away from my computer. It's crazy, you know. <laughs> and uh, she just laughed Good. at me. She said, I tried to tell you you were going to be sucked in. <laughs> I but, know. Um, it always happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've got a question from the chat room. Um, someone is asking, Mike is asking, he said, ask her about her paternity storyline and if the truth will be revealed soon. About uh, paternity? Oh, yes. Oh, that's, that's a really good question. Storyline. 
<laughs> Ooh, well, I, you know, I know a little bit more than you guys do, but I really don't know much more. Um, and you can't say, of course. All, I, of course, I can't say, but I know on set we're all kind of picking at the producers and, you know, seeing what we can get out of them, maybe give them a couple drinks, see if they give us some of our storyline or something. Yeah. Um, but it's just the funniest thing. I mean, we all wonder what, what's going to go on with our storyline. But, um, you know, as you know, if, if you're a soap fan and if you've been following it, um, Miranda doesn't know about uh, about her, you know, how she was conceived. So um, if the producers are smart, which I know they are, I'm sure that's going to be a, a story eventually, and it's um, it's going to happen. And I'm really, uh, I guess, excited to see how Miranda's going to handle that because mm-hmm. you know it's no little thing to to take on. So um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna brace myself for that one. Those scenes should be really yeah. interesting. Well, and and the thing that I, I think is is great is the way Prospect Park and the writers of AMC have have, you know, they're tying up loose ends. You know, all these unanswered questions that when the show went off air, you know, um, everybody was like, oh, well, you know, this didn't end right. I mean, I've just seen the commentary, the, the feedback on, on social media, and, and my friend having these conversations, well, even before the show, you know, came to Hulu, she was like, you know, I hope they address this. I hope they address this. Oh, my gosh. And she just ran down a whole laundry list of things, and it, it looked oh, like, yeah. you know, the writers are making the effort to, to address some of these questions that the fans really have. Had. And, and it, yeah. But it, it makes for great storyline, continuation, and it also, does. you know, and gives you something to write about, you know, too. Yeah, it's true. And they're doing everything in a really timely manner, too. They're not just bombarding the audience with answers all in one place, but they're really taking their time with things. And, you know, as so do, they, they take their time with the stories. But I think the, the good part about um, the scheduling for this is that they're moving a little bit quicker uh, than most mm-hmm. soaps would. Um, they're advancing the storylines a lot quicker and, they're answering the questions um, a little sooner, which is nice, but they're still taking their time with things. So I think that balance was struck really nicely. So props to the mm-hmm. writers for that. Oh, yeah. Now, there's another question in the chat room for you. Bizarre1000, that's the username, said, I want to know how is it going from TV to online and what makes one better than the other? Um, you know, I wouldn't say either one is better than the other. Um, of course, I'm a little bit biased since AMC yeah. is online. But um, of course. I think the main difference is probably the accessibility. Um, because, I mean, if you're like me, I'm literally out of the house the whole day. And I, you know, I like to watch shows on my own time. Um, I'm also kind of in the generation with the college kids right now. Like, I know... Half of my friends don't even own TVs. They just watch everything from, you know, Netflix and Hulu and iTunes and mm-hmm. whatever else or, you know, YouTube. Um, so when I come home, I like being able to just go on my computer and watch whatever I want to watch, you know, watch all my children on my own schedule. So that's, I think, the main difference. And it's convenient, too, um, because then we can really track stats really nicely, too, and I feel like the audience becomes more engaged because they can give mm-hmm. more feedback and it's uh, we can easily change and adapt to what they want. Um, I don't know if they've noticed, but a lot of the um, suggestions that have come in for the Moore show, which is the recap show that we do on Friday, um, mm-hmm. we take them in every week and every week we're catering exactly to what they want. So I think that's nice that they're able to do that. Yeah. Now, you know, recently um, Prospect Park announced that they were going to scale back, you know, from doing four episodes a week to two. And are you guys still filming pretty regularly, or has your filming schedule changed in lieu of the fact that it's, you know, it's going to be aired twice a week now? Or mm-hmm. um, has, uh, has it dramatically yeah. changed for you? Or I mean, it depends on what you consider gr- dramatic. Um, originally, our filming um, schedule was five weeks on and then five weeks off. And during the five weeks that we were off, One Life to Live would be shooting. Um, but now, because of the schedule changes, which I hear is actually going very well because, you know, people are um, able to keep up with the show, too. They don't need to watch uh, two full hours of material every week. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then they can watch both shows as well. It just makes more sense for the network. But um, because of that, our schedule actually got way changed, and we're not going back till August. So yeah. it's you know it's kind of you know it's not we weren't so happy about it at first, but being here, you know, I'm back in California. We shoot in Connecticut, so they fly me out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's nice to come back to my normal life, and it gives me and the other actors um, an opportunity to do other things and to, you know, go audition and for me, you know, specifically work on my music. So I've actually come to really like it. It's kind of a convenient schedule, I think. And going back in, I think, August 12th, I believe. So You fun. know, to me, that would be like the dream job of a lifetime because – how many jobs out there can you can you actually, you know, just go to and have X number of time off to go do other things or just breathe or relax or whatever exactly. you want to do and then you go back by a certain date. I mean, it's awesome. And, and you know, so many actors now are multi-talented. I mean, they do so many different things like you. You've got your music. And like you said, it gives you that opportunity to do other things. And, and just my personal opinion when you're online, no matter if you're watching All My Children or if you're surfing the web, everything is so fast and it's so brief. And, you know, and mm-hmm. I think people, you know, it's kind of like watching YouTube videos. You know, you don't want to be chained to a video for 20 minutes, you know, every time exactly. you, you know, watch a particular one. I think the concept is brilliant because it's mm-hmm. not only, you know, it doesn't mean that the, the um, show's going away. It just means, you know, no, not that. At all. I think it, it's a better fit for the audience that views everything online. It, it is for me. Exactly. I'm in my fast-paced life. <laughs> and the other thing yeah. that people, you know, need to realize is that these are episodes that you can watch again and again. So there's no opportunity to miss an episode like on network television where, you know, a lot of them right. now are putting the soaps online and they're programming online because they've been forced to do so. But at the same time, right. in your situation with your show, it's available anytime. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's a great thing. Um, so yeah, it really that's is. just awesome. <laughs> now, I had another question. Uh, Amber in the chat room said, um, would you ask Denise if she has heard anything from Susan Lucci or Alicia Minshew uh, regarding uh, them joining the Kane family? Um, and they said, you're such a fantastic fit for the family. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, thank you, Amber. Um, I, I really am not allowed to give anything away, but I can tell you that you'll be happy. Um, okay. Regarding, regarding Erica, or sorry, Erica, Susan and Alicia, but, um, oh gosh, I really wish I could say, but I can't, so I'm just going to leave it at that, oh, but I will tell you that, no. that you will be definitely. very excited. So there's good news. There's, that's definitely yeah. good news to well, answer that question. definitely don't. <laughs> Don't want to put you in any kind of position where you would compromise anything by any stretch. Um, but I, I will say this, and I can say it since I'm saying it and you're not, but I did see a, um, a press release the other day where Susan Lucci had been asked, you know, um, she she came out saying, we're trying, you know, to coordinate my schedule with Prospect Park filming schedule. And so that to me was a little bit of a hint that, you know, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of timing. And and, um, and right. I know the fans are, they're, they're just waiting. You know, they're so excited. And 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 I think too, you know, they feel like that Alicia too coming back would would be like it would be everything would come full circle for all my children. Um, and right, and so yeah, exactly. I, we anxiously await. But you know, the show has just kind of gotten relaunched as of April, so the end of April. So you know, it, it, you just you're just getting your feet wet, and it's um, true. yeah, it's only been a it month. It doesn't mean it's going to be over in a, in two months. So hey, everybody, just hang on, it's going to be all right. And and Amber is we yelling have yay. <laughs> Amber is saying, yay, and she put a smiley face. But yeah, she, that you just made her day. To that question. <laughs> well, uh, um, we got one more question. Um, I've got one more question for you from the chat room, and then I would love to play your sneak peek song for the listeners, if, uh, okay. if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, Bazaar I love that. is asking, Bazaar is asking, will we ever see any crossover shows with All My Children and One Life to Live? Has there been any that's talk of that? That's really you know, we're kind of wondering the same thing um, because we're actually pretty close to the One Life cast since we kind of share the studio and a lot of times we're doing press events together. So we've spent a lot of time with them and they are such a blast. 
Um, so we we talked amongst ourselves. We're like, oh, we should do crossovers, you know, hint, hint, Jeff and Rich. Um, so, you know, who knows? I I hope so. I think that'd be really interesting. And I hear that that happens pretty often on soap. So um, why not? I think that'd be great if they did that. So fingers crossed. Well, <laughs> Well, you know, I was um, I was chatting with uh, Georgie Velasuso recently, and he was saying, you know, that the the beauty of online is that anything's possible. That you know, the sky's the mm-hmm. limit, and there's all kinds of things that you can do, um, you know, in that format that you necessarily can't do among major network television. So, you know, exactly. you guys have got a lot more uh, opportunities now to do some really creative and imaginary things that before were just, you know, a product of the imagination and, and just kind of a hope. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be right. interesting to see how everything kind of comes together as as you move forward. But the success of the two shows before and now being relaunched, um, I, I think there's exactly. nothing but positive things to come from it, you know, as Aww, we move forward. So it's you. just it's it's just really um great to see how everything's unfolding. But uh, I am just so glad that you're a part of it. I, as I said at the beginning of the interview, <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I love your character, and you're doing a fantastic job in the role. So um, oh, we you hope so to much. see you around for a very, very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, uh, before <laughs> before we wrap tonight, I want to give the audience a sneak peek of a song that's going to be on your new album, and um, and this one is called Love You Not. And would you like to tell the listeners a little bit about the song, like <laughs> your inspiration for sure. it, kind of a background to it? Yeah, this song, um, it's, uh, it's a really poppy song, so it's a lot different from, you know, if any of you have been watching Parachute, it was more of a... Um, an acoustic song. This is more Denise. This is Denise. This is my music. Um, kind of sarcastic. I mean, it's uh, it's fun and it's lighthearted. And um, in a way, I guess it kind of relates to the storyline that's going on right now. It's like, uh, you know, I love loving you as a friend, but I'm not in love with you. Um, that's basically the tag of the song. It's, you know, love you not. Um yeah, so I guess it kind of relates to everything that goes on. I didn't even realize that. So that's kind of a happy uh, happy coincidence. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's well, a hey, cool and, song. And, well, and, and you, just said, you, you just said something that kind of gave me a brainstorm. This is something that the fans, that, you know, need to pitch to, to the producers and the writers of Prospect Park and of All My Children and say, yeah. hey, we need to play Denise's song Love you not in the show for the storyline that's going on right now. I mean, it would be a great oh, fit, obviously. Uh, <laughs> that, that would be, be amazing. Hilarious. So I it know would be, it would. It would, you know, it would, and uh, because a lot of the the things that have unfolded since the show launched, you know, already um, it would just be. <laughs> I think it would be a good fit. So, well, we won't yeah. keep the, the listeners waiting any longer. I want to play the song, and uh, and you guys, I'm telling you, you're in for a great treat. This is Denise Thompson and Love You Not. <laughs>
was awesome. That was awesome, Denise. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Uh, I'm sure the listener, like I said, that's a fun, poppy, just upbeat song. I mean, you can't help but get in a great mood. If you're in a bad mood, put on Denise's music. It's <laughs> awesome. And, oh, uh, and I know thanks. you mentioned you mentioned earlier that you're, you know, you're getting these, the albums in the final stages. Do you have any kind of, proje- someone that was asking, I think they are anxious to pick it up when it drops, but do you have any kind of projected, you know, date when it might be available for purchase? Uh, prediction. Well, let's see. We're still getting, I think, backing. We're, the thing is, I mean, there's the option of going indie, and then there's an option going with a label. Um, at this point, we're actually meeting with labels, so uh, depending on how long that takes, which could take, you know, it could take a couple months, and it could take maybe six or seven months. Um, and we're hoping for the couple, obviously, and we still have a bunch of people to meet with. And once we figure that out, we're hoping for maybe a spring release. Um, so, I mean, don't quote me on it, but that would be ideal. So hopefully we'll have a, something out for you guys to hear by then. Oh, that sounds awesome. Well, we anxiously look forward to it. It's going to be a great album. If this is any Thank indication, you. Uh, it, it, we can't wait. So uh, please keep us posted oh, and so much. Uh, Definitely, I will tell you that on my other show, Jam and Jukebox, where I feature all indie music, I will be featuring this song, with your permission, of course. Yay! And, yes. um, so and any other music that you release, we'd love to get it out there and help promote it for you and let it be heard, because it is great you. stuff that needs to be heard. So, definitely. Oh, thanks. Well, I'm Denise, so thank you. Thank you so very much for being our special guest this evening. It's been a blast. I have so enjoyed talking with you. Love to have it you back. Really um really and uh, awesome. so best of luck me. to you and uh, for for much continued success as uh, you go forward. And uh, we're, we're going to keep watching AMC. Can't wait to see what's going to happen in soon. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. It was fun talking to you. Oh, uh, same here. Yeah. Well, take care. All right. And yeah. enjoy, okay. enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. You too. All right. Have a good one. All righty. All right. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we've just been speaking with Denise Taunts, and what a sweetheart. She is awesome, and uh, uh, just a fun, fun interview, and so enjoyed speaking with her. And, uh, gosh, thank you guys to all of you who have been, uh, you know, in the chat room just chatting it up and asking questions. Great questions, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, so I also want to let you know before we wrap that coming Wednesday night we have – Eric Nelson, who plays A.J. Chandler. So if you're an A.J. Chandler fan, be right here, 8 p.m. Eastern, because he is going to be with us. And I can tell you he's very excited. I can't wait to talk with him either. He and I have been having some correspondence um, behind the scenes, and he's just an awesome guy. I can't wait to speak with him and uh, to find out about A.J. And he also does a lot of other neat stuff um, you know, on the side, aside from acting, so we'll be talking about that. So he will be here Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. And, and by the way, if any of you would like to call in and speak with him, uh, our number is 347-945-6965. Jot it down. And uh, please feel free to call in. We will be glad to put you on air. You can talk with him and ask him your questions. Of course, we will take questions from the chat room. We're always glad to do that as well. But just wanted to let you know that, that we do take calls. So we look forward to hearing from you. So with that, I want to say good night. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. We greatly appreciate it. If you're brand new to our program, welcome aboard. We're so glad to have you, and we look forward to having you back again. This is Behind the Mic Radio. I'm your host, Dawn Mack. And with that, I will say good night and enjoy the rest of your week and hope to see you right back here Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern with Eric Mills. Take care, all. Good night. Thanks for listening to tonight's show. You can connect to Behind the Mic Radio on Twitter at BT Mike Radio and on Facebook at Behind the Mic Radio. Check out our website at BehindTheMicRadio.com. Also, follow us right here on Blog Talk Radio where you can stay up to date on all upcoming shows. Every episode is available for immediate download upon the conclusion of each broadcast and as always on iTunes. Thank you for joining us.